Do people, as the expressions go, cause you to ruffle your feathers? Do they cause you to, to get uptight? Do they get under your skin? And what do you do when that happens? I mean, it's bound to happen. But the question is, how do you handle it when it happens? Do you handle it in a way that shows, hey, you aren't normal. You must belong to Jesus Christ. You must be one of those Christians. character is to the Christian. I will tell you this, that when you read the epistles, when we study Ephesians chapter 4, 5, and 6, you're going to see that character is critical. Character and conduct. And lest you think that you can't walk as Christ walked, then you don't understand what happened in Ephesians chapter 1, 2, and three, because it's in those chapters that God tells you who you are and what you have in Christ Jesus. Now we've come to Ephesians chapter four. And as we come to Ephesians chapter four, remember this is a pivotal point in the book. We are turning from the teaching to the living out of these truths. We're turning from doctrine to duty. How do I live in the light of these truths? And the first thing that he's going to deal with, he's going to deal with our character. He tells us, I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you, I am begging you, I am beseeching you that you would walk in a manner worthy of the calling that you have in Christ Jesus. Now, when he's talking about worthy, you can think of those old fashioned scales with the weights, with the little, the little uh, dishes on each side where they would put the weight or measure out the gold or measure out the silver, measure out the stones. And he says, you are to walk in a manner worthy, having the same weight as your high calling that you have in Christ Jesus. And then he tells us what our character is to be like. He says we are to walk in humility, and we looked at that in our last program. We are to walk with gentleness. We are to walk with patience. We are to show tolerance to one another in love. And this is where we want to start today. We want to start with gentleness. Now, the word for gentleness in the Greek is P R A U T. E S. And the reason I'm telling you that is because if you would go to a concordance or you would go to the King James Version, you wouldn't see the word gentleness. You would see the word meekness. And honestly, if I were going to translate it, because I think of the way we think today, I wouldn't translate it gentleness. I'm not a scholar. Okay. So just know this. I'm not a scholar. I know the Word of God. I study the Word of God. But I mean, I don't have the academics behind me me to back it up. But if I were going to translate it, I would translate it meekness. Now, I would translate it meekness, although sometimes people think that meekness is weakness. But I would want people to understand that it is not just being, oh, bless your heart, oh, being gentle, patting the cat gently, patting the dog, patting your shoulder, not just being this way. But it is more an inwrought grace of the soul. It is an in, when you think of protes, when you think of what's translated gentleness and was translated meekness, it was something that was counterculture in that day, and really, in a sense, is counterculture in our day because people today are, are anything but meek. And they're anything but gentle. They're anything but protes. And what that means is this, that I am going to accept 
all of God's dealings with me without retaliation. I'm going to uh, uh, accept them in a submissiveness, knowing that what God wants to do is he wants to work this out in my life as, as I come under his control. One of the words that they use for, uh, or the way that they use this word prates back in biblical times is they would use it for getting a, a bridle on a horse and, and holding that bit in and holding those reins tight so that they took this horse with all of its muscle and all of its power and they reined it in. And this is what he's talking about here. He says, look, you belong to Jesus Christ. And because you belong to Jesus Christ, this is the way you're to walk. You are to walk in a manner worthy, weight, having the same weight as, as Jesus. You are to walk in humility. Now, we saw that that humility is just like it says in Philippians 2, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he humbled himself. He brought himself low and he became obedient unto death, even the death of a cross. Now, Jesus says in, in, in the gospel, he says, oh, all of you that are weary and heavy laden, come to me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek, King James Version, I am gentle, and I am lowly of heart. So there was that meekness. When you think of Jesus Christ, you can just think of all the power of God. I mean, he's equal with the Father. And all that power of God and all that authority, because there's a difference between power and authority. Power is the ability to do it. Authority is the ability to execute it or command it. So think of all that power. Think of all that authority. Think of the fact that that he is God and he was there in the beginning and, and all things came into being by him and, and, and through him so that nothing came into being except by him as John chapter one, verses one and two says. So think of all of that and then think about all of that being reined in so that he walks in this gentleness. Do you see gentleness today? Do you see it in society? Do you see it in the way that people react with one another, talk to one another? Do you see it in the midst of conflict? I mean, or in the midst of, of disorganization? Do you see it, you know, when the plane is late and when it's been delayed not once, not twice, but three times, and you think, why can't this airline get their act together? And or why are they, you know, let's just get on the plane and go. Well, they've got a mechanic difficulty if they're telling you the truth. The question is, when you're standing there, are you reacting like everybody else is reacting? If you are, you are not walking in a manner worthy of the high calling that you have in Christ Jesus. And many times I have stood at those counters and I have watched people lambaste, I mean, just lay low the, uh, the, uh, um, the representative of that airline as they stand there, as they give the news, as they try to get you on another plane or whatever, and just cut them down. And, and, and I, there are times when I have leaned over privately and just said, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I know that you're doing what you can. And I know it's not your fault there's a mechanical difficulty. I know it's not your fault that the pilot didn't show up or the flight attendants didn't show up, which happens so often with an airline that, that I fly from Atlanta to Chattanooga. I, I, I'm just sorry. And I just, I, I, you know, I want to apologize to you for them. A kind word, an action like that. And they just look at me. I have people, that, and I'm not telling you this to brag on me. I'm just telling you that I am this kind of a person. I mean, I am a, I am a high go kind of person, high energy kind of person. And yet I realize that as I am standing there, that I am a representative for Jesus Christ. And people will often say to me, you are so sweet. You are so kind. Oh, Thank you so much. Well, that ought to be true of us at all times. We ought to be sweet. We ought to be kind. We ought to be patient. 
And this is, I mean, we ought to be gentle. We ought to be meek. And this is what he's talking about here. Now, let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Let's open the book. Let's look at these words because they're so important. And remember, if you haven't downloaded the study guide for Precepts for Life for the study on Ephesians, it is not too late. It is never too late because the goal of this program is to help you, precious one, discover truth for yourself. Why? Because Jesus prayed for you. He prayed, Father, sanctify them, set them apart, make them different. Sanctify them through thy truth. And then he made this statement, thy word is truth. And as you study along with me, what you're going to see as you study along with me is you're going to see yourself being sanctified. You're going to see yourself, as Ephesians later says, being cleansed with the washing of the water of God's word. The more you spend in this, uh, in the more time that you spend in this book, studying this book, and I mean, I mean not just reading it quickly and forgetting what you read, if you get our study guide, you'll learn how to read this book. You'll learn how to mark the text. You'll learn how to have it go deep in your heart. And eventually, you'll see it transforming you. I mean, this is what I hear all the time. Men come to our men's conference, and the women are calling and saying, what did you do to my husband? Well, what we did to your husband was, our male staff, is put them in the Word of God. And they learned how to study it, and they spent time in it. I mean, we, uh, uh, we're in the Word. We opened the book. And any conference we ever have, any place you ever go with us, you're going to learn how to open the book and you're going to learn how to get truth, whether it's a teen conference or a student conference or whether it is teaching children how to study, you're going to learn how to open the book. Well, and when you do, the book is going to get into you. So he says, you are to walk in a manner worthy. You are to walk with humility. You are to walk with gentleness. And you are to walk with patience. Now, this word for patience means, in a sense, you're not going to just jump on a person. You're not going to have a quick retort. But you're going to be able to go along and not explode. There's going to be a patience there with that person that does not quickly get aggravated. Yeah, we need to talk about that, don't we? We really need to talk about that because we're living in a very impatient world. I mean, you're at a light, the horn is honking. You're not going fast enough. Somebody's going past you. They're raising their fist or they're raising something else. I mean, people are just on short fuses. You don't need to be. And we'll talk about that when we come back. Listen now to this important announcement. Welcome back, beloved. I uh, just thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for studying with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you for hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Thank you for longing to know God's word because I pray. I pray that God would just draw people to us that are hungry to know truth for themselves. And I pray that God will create in the hearts of people such a hunger, such a longing to discover truth for themselves. So thank you. Well, now let's go back to Ephesians chapter 4. He tells us to walk in a manner worthy of the calling that we have in Christ Jesus. And when you look at these, at these attributes, and when you look at humility, when you look at gentleness, when you look at, at, at patience and showing tolerance for one another in love, really, as you look at the life of Christ, this is what you see. This humility, this lowliness of mind, this gentleness. And remember I told you, it's, it's really the word meekness in the sense that, that it is a strength that is born of character. It's a strength that is born of character that is able uh, uh, to restrain itself and to accept all of God's dealings with us as good, without disputing, without retaliating. It is something that gives you an, equ an equanimity 
<laughs> I said a big word, didn't I? Uh, of spirit, a, a calmness of, of, of behavior. And then the patience. The patience means I'm going to be slow to avenge wrongs. It, it means that, that, you know, I'm not going to be hot-tempered. I'm not going to come along and, and just slap you, smack you, cut you down. And, and this is something that, you know, I find myself having to watch, especially when I'm under a lot of pressure, especially when I'm in a hurry. And I live a, a lifestyle at Precept Ministries International. My husband and I are the co-founders of this ministry. And I write a lot of courses and I work with our team and with our teaching team. And I take people and teach them in Israel along with our team and, and grow Greece and Rome. We study Romans and Rome and all of this. I live a, and, and then I speak in different places and I'm on some boards and that. And so I find myself living like this. And when I am not careful, when I'm not careful to sit back and remember whose I am and everything, I can get uptight and I can lack patience. And, and, and I can just, you know, I have to be very careful because uh, before I came to know Jesus Christ, I had quite a temper. I mean, quite a temper. And so God has brought that under control. Has he brought it under control in you? Well, when I start to spout off or when I start to get upset or I, I just start to just move so fast, God reminds me by his spirit, hey, Listen to me very carefully. You're to walk under the control of my spirit. If you walk by the spirit, you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Well, now remember in Ephesians chapter one, we saw that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of us. And we have seen by going through and looking at the scriptures, for instance, in chapter 3, verse 16, that we have power, inherent power, through the Holy Spirit that's in us. So we have the power to live righteously. We have the power to live the way that we are supposed to live. But it's all by the Spirit. And you're going to see later on in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, that we're to be filled with the Holy Spirit. In other words, we're to be controlled with the Holy Spirit. So he's going to tell us truth in several different ways. But if you go to Galatians, and Galatians comes before Ephesians, if you go to Galatians chapter 5, listen to what the fruit of the Spirit is. When it's talking about fruit, it's saying this is what the Spirit produces when he's in control in your life, when he's filling you. And it says in verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and there's that word patience. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and there's that word prates, that word meekness, and then self-control against such there is no law. You don't need any laws to govern you in this because you have the Holy Spirit and if you walk this way then there's no law that you're going to break. And so going back to Ephesians, he says, this is your character. If you're going to walk in a manner worthy of your high calling, it's a matter first of all of character. It says, walk with all humility Humility, gentleness, patience. Now watch, showing tolerance for one another in love. Now this showing tolerance for one another in love is very, very interesting. And it's very interesting because what he's saying is, is this, that I look at you and there are things about you that irritate me. There are things about you that get under my skin. There are things about you that ruffle my feathers. There are things uh, about you that, that, that just, you know, go against the grain. All those expressions that we see. And, and, and they ruffle me and they go against the grain and they get under my skin and, and they ruffle my feathers. Why? Because it's not what I want you to do. It's not the way I want you to react. It's not the way I want you to respond. Maybe it's with your kids. Maybe it's with your husband. Maybe it's with your wife. Maybe it's with your boss. Maybe it's with those that are under you. But whoever it is, whoever it is, you have to remember, hey, 
I'm standing there as a representative of Jesus Christ. I am part of the body of Jesus Christ. I am part of the household of God. I am part of the holy temple of God. And therefore, whatever the irritation is, I need to show tolerance for one another in love, which means this, that with all your idiosyncrasies, and they're probably not idiosyncrasies, but they're idiosyncrasies to me, with all your idiosyncrasies, with all your irritations, all your, your things that I just don't think ought to be, that you ought to be saying or reacting or doing, with all of that, if I'm going to walk in a manner worthy of the high calling in Christ Jesus, I have to show tolerance to you. And I have to show tolerance to you in love. This is what he's saying. Now, when it says in love, I want you to go for just a minute to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Because 1 Corinthians chapter 13 shows us the behavior of love. And it says love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. Love does not brag. It's not arrogant. It does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. It's not provoked. It does not take into account a wrong suffered. It does not rejoice in unrighteousness. It rejoices in truth. Now listen very carefully. Love bears all things. It shows tolerance. It believes all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. Love never fails. Now, this is the distinguishing characteristic of a child of God. God is love. God is in you. You're in God. You're in Christ. And therefore, you are to show tolerance to one another in love. Oh, beloved, this is how you walk in a manner worthy of the high calling in Christ Jesus. The question is, are you walking that way? What do you need to do today? You need to stop and reflect on these words. You need to look at them and consider their meaning. And then you need to say, hey, am I living this way? Is this the way that I am treating others? Is this the way that I am conducting myself? Is this the character of Christ that I'm displaying to others? Oh, beloved, live it, live it. These are his precepts for life. And through his precepts, you and I please him. How do you, beloved, want others to treat you? I mean, do you want them to be patient with you? Do you want them to overlook your idiosyncrasies? Do you want them to, to, to rein in their temper? Do you want them, in a sense, to be patient with you? Do you want them to be kind, gentle? Do you want them to be, you know, I mean, bossing you around? No. The way you want to be treated is the way that you should be treating others. And you say, but they don't treat me that way. Well, listen, precious one, this is your precept for life. It doesn't matter how they treat you. It does not matter. I mean, it's displeasing to God if they're treating you wrong, and God will take care of them. And believe me, God will take care of them, and God will hold them accountable. But that's not the issue. You cannot control their behavior, but you can control your behavior. You can control your response. You can control your attitude. You can be like Christ, and you can be like Christ. You can walk in a manner worthy of Jesus Christ if you will just walk by the Spirit. This is God's precept for life for you today, beloved. And, and that is that as you walk out of the house or as the family gets ready to come home or as you get ready to meet people is to simply stop and say, God, in your mind, in your heart, I want to walk in a manner worthy. And if you don't walk in a manner worthy and you happen to blow it, then immediately you need to apologize. Immediately you need to say, excuse me for saying that. Excuse me for reacting that way. That was not pleasing to God, and I'm so sorry. 
I really want to be everything that God wants me to be. Can you really say that? Do you really want to be everything that God wants you to be? If so, beloved, then you are willing to reign in those emotions and, and govern your conduct by the character that you have in Christ Jesus. And when you blow it, then you stop and you confess it. And you know what? That, even the confession of it, will speak volumes to that person. How many people do you know that walk with humility, that walk in, in, in this meekness, in, in, in this gentleness, that live patiently with others and that show tolerance to them in love? You need to be one of them so that others, if they were asked that question, they could always say, oh, it's my friend so-and-so. Be that wonderful representative of Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching today. All the programs you see on Precepts for Life are available on CD and DVD. To download your free copy of the study guide or to find out more about Precept Ministries International, click on our website or call us today. Join us for our next program as we discover more Precepts for Life.